I, I think about it this way, and, and we, we discussed this a little bit. Um, there's a, a, a quote that I love uh, by William F. Buckley, not that, and I don't love it because I agree with him. I, I love it because I think it really exposes a fundamental difference between conservatism and liberalism. And I, I can't quote it exactly, but I'll paraphrase it, which is that uh, from what conservatives believe is that everything that was good happened in the past and that our job is to hold on to that and um, that there is no nothing new for us in the future. Good God. And, and to me, this... I can't imagine having that worldview. Uh, to me, that is just anti-evolutionary, just at the basis well, of most it. Most of them don't believe in evolution. Well, that's, so that's I mean, no you problem. know, right? That's, it certainly fits in with it. But for me, and and I think this is the basics of 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 liberalism, is that societies evolve like everything else in the universe evolves, and that we. Uh, and, and as I said earlier, that you know the politics is a reflection of the level of consciousness of a, a society. That that overall level of consciousness of society has been increasing over human history, and our politics changes as a result. And that we are moving towards a more equal, a more just society. And that you can, you know, if you if you tell the history of of humanity uh, through that, I mean. You know, we all started off as slaves, pretty much, right. to one or two really powerful men, and uh, you know, things have changed mm, quite dramatically. Major queens of Egypt, a few know. queens. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you. Um, so, and then if you just take our our country in particular, when if you look at the Constitution, it it wasn't really democratic. I mean, the only people that could vote were white men who had property. That was it. If we, you, I actually heard this once that you know an expert on the on the Constitution said that they said if you owned a mule you could vote, and the interviewer said, well, what what if the mule died? You lost your vote. So next time somebody is defending the Constitution and we the strict constructionists and we must stick to the principles of the Constitution as it was written by the founders, ask them that question. Oh, well, so are you really in favor of taking away the vote from women, taking away the women vote from no vote, black the people? Framers. That's right. I mean, and that's they didn't what I'm get saying. the vote until last century. 1919. Right. I mean, yep. it's less than 100 years since women could vote. And black people, I mean, you know, basically they couldn't vote in a good part of this country until the 50s. So, so in both those things, when they, when they let them have the vote, that's when the problem <laughs> that's started. Right. It's well, wrong with the yes, country. We yes. need to go back to the that's exactly right. <laughs> dark ages. So uh, like you can Islamic see, I mean, and I can give you lots of different examples. Uh, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, as it was written by the founders, would not have been accepted by the states without they had to amend the Constitution with 10 amendments, which we now know as the Bill of Rights, before it could even have been adopted. So the founders really weren't that, um, you know, all seeing. Um, they were slave owners, some of them, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They, they, they didn't really trust the people, even the people, the few people they gave the vote, they didn't really trust. And that's why the Senate was not uh, popularly elected. You know, they they withheld that so because to the the uh, the state legislature. You know, it's like the House of Lords. Trust me. You know, the founders didn't think much of the average person. Okay, they, they didn't come down <laughs> from the the mountaintop with gold tablets. So our history, the history of our country over the last two hundred and thirty whatever years, uh, has been an increase in democracy, an increase in the the you know the ability of the average person to participate in our uh, to be considered a citizen. And I think that that will just keep increasing in that. And that's what a liberal is in favor of. That's what a liberal is in favor of increasing democracy. As far as I can tell a conservative wants to keep it back the way it was, where some were privileged and some, you know, the, the gods and clods, as famously yeah, said in South Park. the order of things. That's mm -hmm. right. I would say that my, my, uh, my take on conservatism is this, that the conservative wants things to remain as they are. And there are three categories, three what I call R words that perfectly describe that mindset. <laughs> the first is rich. Now, right. anybody can understand how a rich person <laughs> likes things just fine the way they are. They love things like trickle-down economics. You know what that is? Imagine a big tower with a sea of common people, the clods, dying of thirst underneath the tower. And on the top of the tower, there are the elite, the 1%, who own 90% of the country. And they're up there with an incredible bounty of bottled water, 
fresh water they can drink all they want just till they're satiated. As a matter of fact, they're so satiated that at times they have to relieve themselves, so they go over to the edge and do it over the side under the heads of the low lifes below. And that's trickle-down economics. Okay, so that's one, the rich. The second are the rustics. Hmm, I grew up in Dixieland, and God, don't y'all ever get embarrassed at being backward? I mean, really? Are we ever going to, like, join the 21st century down he- downhill, you know? Are we going to be trash forever? You know, Christ Almighty. The rustic, the credulous, the rubes, the country bumpkins, the people that really, frankly, aren't that informed. Mm-hmm. They're really not up to speed, you know? And they hold in contempt intelligence. They, Phew, they're sus- sure. suspicious of, tr- of, 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 of uh, change. You know, they resist it doggedly, have to be drugged by the scruff of their neck into the, you know, space age. You know, so there's that group. The, the, so you got the rich and the rustic. And the other, unfortunately, are the religious, you know, the more, fun, the more fundamentalist variety who are legion. And they also resist change and, you know, take preposterous positions like anti-global warming. You know, uh, you know, any change in morality is anathema, well, especially when it has to do with S-E-X, <laughs> you know. So... This is the conservative mindset, and the conservative mindset, then, is resistant to change. Here's my argument for that. In the physical universe, I would like any reader to call in or write me of any physical observable object in the universe that is not doing one of two things. It's either growing and expanding, or it's contracting into death. It's either growing or it's declining. Growth or decline. There is no static place ever that has been that you can discover. In a plant's growth cycle, nobody can pinpoint that apex in which the plant starts going into decline. Like I always thought the country was gonna come down, the empire of America was gonna fall, but I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. But after eight years of an entire intellectual mediocrity and stooge in the White House named George W. Bush, you know, I said I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> I wasn't going to name names. So, you know, we are just starting to get the bill. Your economy is collapsing because you have listened to clowns like Ronald no. Reagan, who, who, uh, you know, what's, you want to get big government off your back? You see what's happening to the world economy? You see what's happening to your country? You see the un- unemployment rate that really is at least 15%? You know why that is? Because big government got off the banks of the backs of the banks. That's what it looks like when you get big government off. You need big government. Like you need, you know, if you lived in a high crime area, like you need a 12-gauge pump shotgun next to your bed. You know, you need somebody looking out for your interest. That's what the federal government is supposed to do. But you've allowed this legalized corruption to go up there. The fat cats go up there on K Street and buy these creeps, buy their vote, get their agenda passed. You don't have a prayer. You're not, you're not a participating member of a democracy. You're a slave. So I think you were on mm-hmm. this philosophical argument about how nothing can change in the universe, and you kind of got sidetracked. Well, that's true. I mean, nothing, so, everything is either growing or dying, and, and conservatives want to keep things the same. There's no such thing as same. There's no such thing as staying the same through time in the observable physical universe. The only, the only thing that stays exactly the same is BS. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not subject to the interactional forces of change just pure nonsense, like, you know, Jesus is coming next week. You know, that, that kind of garbage, garbage can, you know, last for thousands of years unchanged. Wild, untr- you know. Well, one of the things that's really— uh, Sorry, you can, you can tell I feel somewhat passionately yes, on this subject. I'm just definitely. watching the United States go down the tubes, you know, yeah. while the populace is in American Idol. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs>